Welcome, Welcome to, to a, a couple, couple of bunkies. bunkies! In the last video for our desk build, we made these barley twist legs for the desks. We also prepared all the parts that were required to make the frame. In this video, we put the frames together. I start off putting together the drawer side of each desk. So I take two legs and I take two side pieces. I join them together using pocket holes. I use two paint stirrers in order to give myself a little bit of a gap between the flush surface of the saw and the piece of wood. I did this in order to add a little bit of the contrast between the two segments. It also helps me maintain an even gap. Tim drilled two pocket holes on each of the side supports on each side to connect them to the legs. As of right now, I'm temporarily putting these in just so I have all of the holes and everything's lined up. I still need to cut a groove into the legs and the frame supports in order to slide in the paneling later. Tim finished this frame and moved to the drawer side frame of the second desk. And he repeated the same process. We're separating this build into several parts, and I hope you join us through the entire process. Consider subscribing and ring that bell icon so you get notified for future videos. After finishing the drawer side frames, Tim started working on the open side frames. The open side frames went together just as easily as the drawer side frames. After this one was done, I admired it for a few seconds and then started working on the last open side of the desk. On the previous sides, I framed everything up first. This time I felt comfortable enough that I could drill the pocket holes ahead of time and do the framing later. Once the pocket holes were drilled, Tim started putting the frame together, using the same paint stirrer strips to create the gaps he needed. He observed the frame for a few seconds and then moved on to the next part of his desk build. When cutting the front and back supports, I originally left about a half an inch on each side in order to make a mortise and tenon joint between the legs and all of the supports. That would have made a much stronger joint and a much stronger table. But since we went with pocket holes, we didn't need the excess material. So I had to remeasure and square up the back supports for this desk build. Tim went ahead and drilled the pocket holes for two of the back supports and one front support for each of the desks. Once the pocket holes were drilled, Tim connected them to the side frames from earlier. When connecting these together, I had to ensure that in the end, these desks would mirror each other. And here is the skeleton of our desk frame. I go through the exact same process for the second frame, for the exception, the sides are reversed. The next part of this build required me to select some lumber so I can build the frame for the drawers. After putting this cherry lumber through the planer, I took them to the table saw I broke it down into one and a half inch intervals. I needed six 19 inch pieces and four 14 inch pieces. These will be shared between the two desks. Once I get done cutting these boards to size, I go over to the frame and conduct a quick dry fit. Once the dry fit confirms the sizes are correct, Tim goes ahead and drills pocket holes on each of the boards. These parts that will make up the drawer frame are going to have grooves in them that will have glued panels that will give the frame extra strength. Tim used 14 inch boards as spacers to attach 19 inch boards that go across the width of the desks. With that as a reference, I put together the rest of the drawer frame. Again, this is all just dry fitted just with screws. I plan to have grooves and side panels inserted into this frame. After this drawer frame is finished, I move on to the next desk, and I repeat the same process as I did earlier. After getting the frame up done on both desks, 
My supervisor number two, Chocolate and I, took the sections of the desktop that I had prepared earlier and cut them straight with the miter saw. These four foot by one foot sections really made it easier to handle than a giant tabletop. After these sections were nice and straight, Tim took them to the table saw where he had a flat sheet laid out and started marking so that he can round over the corners of the desktops. He used a jigsaw to roughly round over the corners. And he repeats the process on the second desktop. While I have this desktop out, I take my palm sander and go over the rough areas on the desktop. Tim glued up these desktop sections somewhere off screen, but I guess he forgot to record it. I used a groove bit in order to make a groove along the back wall of this desk. So in my mind, this was a perfect idea for making the grooves in order to slide in the paneling. However, I felt this process was too dangerous, so I marked all of the edges that needed to be grooved and I took the drawer frame apart. Once the frame was apart, Tim decided to make the grooves using table saw. After I got done cutting all of the pieces that needed the grooves, I started cutting the panels for the drawer frame. Tim did a quick dry fit and made adjustments as needed. Since I used a groove bit and router in order to cut the channel, in the back frame, I had to round over the corners of this panel in order for it to fit correctly. Tim repeats the process for rest of the panels for both desks. We decided to go with a cheaper pine panel for the back and the bottom which will not be seen and a bit more expensive red oak panel for the sides which will be seen. Since this portion of the wood is exposed and there is a groove on the other side, I added a countersink hole for a screw in order to attach this piece of wood. This will be under the desktop and will not be seen. We hope you are enjoying this desk build so far. Give us a thumbs up if you are. We recently made up to 1300 subscribers and now we have a new goal of reaching 5000 subscribers as soon as we can. Please hit that subscribe button and support our channel. Now that we've gotten up to this point with the first table, I start working on the second table by taking it apart and cutting the grooves. The next video should be the last video in this four part series. I will continue where I left off in this video installing the panels for the drawer side of the second table and I will cut some drawers and drawer faces, apply polyurethane to the table and it should be completely done. Consider ringing the bell icon to get notifications on our next video.